Good morning. Welcome to St. Luke's on this absolutely glorious Sunday morning. Our worship this morning begins on page 355 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Page 355. As you are able, please stand. At the top of the page. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Page 356, the glory together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching that we may be a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be attentive to the reading of God's Word. First lesson comes from the first book of Holy Scripture, Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. The rain can be found in our outline bulletin or in your personal lives. A reading from Genesis 22, verses 1 through 14. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son, Isaac, and then he carried, he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the land for 
her also. Abraham said, God himself will provide the land for a burnt offering my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place God had shown him, Abraham built an altar, and there laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from the heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham, Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount, the Lord will provide. And the Lord, sh it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first song I'm pointing to today is Psalm 13. The song is found on page 397 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your, on your outline bulletin. How long will the earth will not forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long, How long shall, shall I have the complexity in my mind? mind? And the grief in my heart, day after day, how long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart, is, my heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will, I will sing, sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me Christian. I will praise the name of the Lord most high. The second psalm I'm pointing for today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, and verses 15 through 18. The psalm is found on page 713 in the Book of Common Prayer, or in your outline bulletin. Let us read Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, and verses 15 through 18, responsively by the whole verse. I will begin. Your love, the Lord, is forever, I sing. From my age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever, and you have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your life forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Continuing with verse 15. Happy are the people who know the festival, the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice day and night. They are jubilant in their righteousness. For you are the glory of your strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, the Lord is our ruler, the Holy One. Our second lesson comes from Paul's first letter to the Church of Rome, chapter 6, verses 12 through 23. The read can be found in our online bulletin or in your personal Bible. Reading from Romans. 
Therefore, therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. We do not know that if you present, do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to life, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater impurity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you get from the things of which you were now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been free from sin, and enslaved to God. The advantage you get is the is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free, free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please pray with and for me. In the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. Hear us, O Lord, as we cry out to you. Open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts. In this we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be comfortable. How long, O oh Lord, how long? How long will we continue to turn on the TV and be overwhelmed with death and destruction, with injustice, with riots, with pain, with suffering? How long, O oh Lord, how long? This was a story that touched me this last week. It's a true story. 
Betty and Curtis Hartland of Fort Worth had been married for 53 years. And for those of you who've been buried anything more than five minutes, you understand 53 years is a long time to be married. Isn't that right, Miss Sandra? <laughs> At the end of their 53 years, they both contracted the coronavirus. What goes through a family stays in the family. They both ended up in the hospital. And the nurses, having compassion upon them, wheeled Betty into Curtis's room because they didn't want to be separated. They knew that together they were strong. They died last week, one hour apart. They were not going to be apart from each other for any time at all. And quite frankly, as a person who's been married over 40 years, I'm kind of hoping that that's the way Jane and I go. But she keeps telling me that she's going to outlive me by decades. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. <laughs> Our world is more and more disconnected. We are interconnected by social media and Facebook and internet and email and Snapchat and Instagram and God only knows what other ways we're supposed to be connected. But the reality is there's more distance between us and it's getting further and further apart every day. There's more and more conflict today than there has been in a long time. Do we wear a mask? Do we not wear a mask? Do we shake hands? Do we fist bump? Do we give a high five from a distance? Can we hug? Are we supposed to stay away? Where we're trying to gather together, we cannot anymore. We're conflicted on so many levels it makes the head spin and us cry out, how long, oh Lord, how long? This year, the year of perfect vision has been a vision of nightmare. It has been the visions of terror. It has been the visions of problems left, right, and center. How long, oh Lord, how long? Psalm 13, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Does anybody out there think that the Lord has turned his back on him? Given everything that we have to do every day. How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart? Day after day, my brothers and sisters, if the stress of the world is not getting to you, either you have a foot firmly planted in the love and grace of Jesus, or you're a sociopath and you have no feeling for the world at all. We seem to be, seem to be spinning out of control faster and faster. Day by day, it seems that the Lord is getting further and further apart from us. How long, O Lord, shall my enemy triumph over me? And you can choose your own personal enemy. It could be the virus. It could be your own personal addictions. It could be the world beating in on you. It could be the fear of unemployment. It could be the fear of divorce. It could be the fear of your neighbor. It could be the fear of the unknown. It could be fear of touching somebody, of going out of your house. Fear is all around us. How long, oh Lord? How long? We get on our knees and we pray, look upon me and answer me, oh Lord. Give light to my eyes. Lest I sleep in death. It would seem like this psalm was written yesterday or last week. But 
David, the psalmist, wrote this particular psalm sometime around the year 1000 BC. As he was in the midst of his own personal crisis. And David knew something about crisis. There's a good possibility that he wrote this song as his son Absalom, who, third son, was trying to kill him. Blood of his blood, flesh of his flesh, didn't do what daddy wanted him to do. Didn't respect daddy the way he was supposed to. He was trying to get knowledge behind above his own status, trying to outthink his parents. We, we got any amen people out there trying to outthink their parents? David, in the midst of this throw, was screaming, how long? This phrase, four times in two verses, as he is crying out, How long? It's a phrase that has been cried out through history. On the banks of the River Nile, the captive children used to cry out, How long will we be under the burden of a Pharaoh? March 25th, 1965. On the steps of the Capitol building in Montgomery, Alabama, Martin Luther King cried out, How long? How long will prejudice blind the visions of men and darken their understanding? How long? How long will it darken and drive bright eyed wisdom? from her sacred throne? How long will wounded justice lying prostrate in the streets of Selma and Birmingham and the communities all over the South? When will the radiant star of hope rise again? How long will justice be crucified? How long? How long will it be narrow? Martin Luther King said, How long? The answer was, Not long! How long will we be oppressed? He said, Not long! Because he knows that our Redeemer lives. And by putting his faith and trust in God, all of these things will not long be here. And David knew not long. Because at the end of this psalm, he cried out, I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord my God all the day long because I know not long. There's going to be an end to all of this and it is coming soon. And the sooner we have Jesus as our Lord, as soon as we put our trust in him, as soon as we lay all our problems at his feet, as soon as we pick up his mantle, as soon as we put on his show and lay aside the things of the world, all these problems will fade away. Not long, my brothers and sisters, not long. Amen. When the world is good and good and my life is fine, I will sing to the Lord and I will praise his holy name. When I'm down on my knees because I've got problems and the world is surrounding me, I will praise to the Lord and I will sing his holy name. When death comes near, I will raise my hand and praise his holy name. Because over the mountains and the seas, 
Your river runs with love for me, and I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing of when your love came down. I can sing of your love forever. I will sing of your love forever. I will sing of your love forever. I will sing of your love forever. And as long as I sing, I know how long. Son and the Holy Ghost. Prayers of the people for the season of Pentecost are formed to you and are found on page 385 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please add your own intercessions during the silence between each meeting, either silently or loud. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael Cooney, our presiding bishop, Michael Hun, and Jerry Lamb, our bishops, for Daniel, our priest, for this gathering, and for all the ministers and people, pray, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for the will of all nations, and for the well being of all people. For Donald, our president, for Michelle and Greg, our governors, pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in need or trouble. This morning we pray, pray for Samuel, Keenan, Marion, Cheryl, Tracy, Arden, Ryan, Baby Jacob, Bill, Bower, Nancy, Bill, Jerry, Marilyn, Ken, Baby Daniel, David, Marshall, Creekout family, Judy, Jean, Barbara, Jane, Lolo, Gay, Doreen, Janice, James, Rebecca, Cameron, and Jen. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, I ask your prayers for Church of the Holy Faith, Santa Fe, Robin Dodge Director. In the St. Luke's family today, we pray for Carol and Charles T. Beamer, Helen and Charles R. Beamer, Joy Beamer, Jerry and Lonnie Beamer, Martha Lou Brooks. I 
I ask your prayers for those in the military, both home and abroad. I ask your prayers for those, those in law enforcement and all firefighters and first responders. I ask your prayers for health care workers. O most o merciful Father, who has wonderfully fashioned us in our own image, in your own image, and made our mind in the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sanctify, we pray. We pray to you, all doctors, nurses, and all health care professionals. Strengthen them in body and spirit and bless their work, that they may find, give comfort to those whose salvation your son became, or those whose salvation your son became man, lived on this earth, little sick, and suffered and died in the on the cross. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. O oh God, our Lord, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. On page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's spend a moment in personal reflection and confession before we continue with our public corporate confession. together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. Please be comfortable. Welcome. Our online bulletin has all of our announcements, so I would pray that you would download it, read it, and then you would know what's going on. Uh, of great importance and excitement is, is that St. Luke's has uh, engaged in a food pantry with Segovia Distribution out of El Paso, and they are providing us to distribute to anybody who shows up Monday, Tuesday at 9 o'clock, 25-pound boxes of fruits and vegetables. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter who you are. All that matters is that you show up, and we will feed you. Currently, we are up to two pallets of food a week. We can give out as much food as we can. We can get more food than we can give out. 
If we wanted to, we had the distribution network, we could bring a semi out here of boxes of foods to give away. The only way that's going to happen is we have more people come. So spread the word. Monday and Tuesday, starting at 9 o'clock, over by the barn, we'll be out there with boxes underneath for pop-up, and we'll be handing them out to you as you go through. If you haven't had communion, there's going to be one of the members of our congregation in that right there, this guest out there, handing out communion and offering to pray with folks. So we could use some more help from the St. Luke's folks in distributing food and getting the word out. If you know somebody during the week who can't make it on Monday or Tuesday, we keep a couple of boxes in the refrigerator here at the church. So we can give it out. We want to continue doing it. This is the beginning of a new outreach. The challenge from the company is to distribute 265,000 boxes between now and the end of August. 265,000. That's a lot of food given away. And I want us to be a part of it. So please, that's awesome. So please, spread the word. Please come out a little bit before 9 o'clock so you can help us distribute. The more we get out, the better off we are. The barn is open. We are accepting. So this is just a, an addition and a, uh, a great thing that we can do for the community. Birthdays and anniversaries. I have been neglect in asking and praying for folks who've had birthdays and anniversaries. But most of the time, I don't get notified of your birthday until after the Sunday. So for everybody who's had a birthday past, bless you and peace be with you. Who? Helen. Helen? She had a birthday yesterday. Helen? Helen, Helen, Helen had a birthday. Hello, happy birthday, Helena. You know, we've got folks. So if your birthday is coming up, if you're not going to tell us, then make sure one of your uh, housemates, one of your family members, so, so that we can acknowledge and we can pray for you and wish you a happy birthday. In addition to that, anniversaries. These things don't change and don't stop just because we're locked down. If you've got an anniversary, we also want to pray for you. So for those of you who have had anniversaries recently, God bless you and the peace of the Lord be upon you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God. Uh, one more thing. How long are we going to be locked down? How long are services going to be suspended? How long is this problem going to last? Not long! <laughs> Not long! We have completed our phase two guidelines. It's in the hands of the vestry for their input. Once I get it, I send it back up to diocesan house. Once we have a very long, extensive conversation and I get their blessing, then the doors will be open. So how long? Not long. In the meantime, stay safe. Be careful. God bless you. Thank you. 
We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the covenant. Unite us to your Son in the sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country, where with the same Luke and all of your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. And mercy and mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. And mercy and mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God, I take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host for your guest. As you are able, please come to the table of prayer. Body of Christ, the bread of table has been set and is available throughout the week for those who want you to come and receive communion. And now the peace of the Lord, which passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah.